Listen, I know this might be hard for you to hear, but the truth is, you're not my first love. Hi pals, Alan aka Spoon here. We are going to go back in time to the things that started it all for me. My first love, my first passion, cars. Before I realized I wanted to be a graphic designer for the rest of my life, I actually wanted to be in the automotive industry. A few of the inspirations were video games like Gran Turismo and Need for Speed, and of course the Fast and the Furious movies. Now, you might be asking, where did you get all these cars from, Spoon? Weren't you like nine or 10 when these came out? How'd you get so many car models at such a young age? Funny story, it was because I dominated at elementary school public speaking competitions. Starting in grade four, it was part of the curriculum to prepare a speech for public speaking. My parents took this very seriously. They helped me write it, they help me memorize it, and they help me figure out how to deliver it. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Pa. Yep, what's up? I have a quick question. Sure. Why did you and Mom take public speaking things so seriously when we were in school? I think it's more for articulation and phonation, and because our job, our job requires us to do presentations. Like your jobs back home? Yeah, we're a medical representative, so we do oh. um, talk to doctors and make presentations. Not because you wanted us to just win all the competitions? Uh, Did you even know no. that it was competitions? Which one? Like the, the school ones? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't. No, I was just wondering. Here, talk to mom. Okay. Here's mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Why did you take public the public speaking competition so seriously? Oh, because it was my passion. I think I, I was working already, and so I did an extra course for that. Where at home? Here in Canada okay, or at home? When I was in the high school, I, I used to be always in the like your president or something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go oh, classroom to classroom, do some speeches, and then the final speeches we do it in front of all the holy school. So I love doing that. That was my one of my passions. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I was just wondering. <laughs> okay, thanks, mom. Yeah, I love you, Baba. I love you. So long story short, these speeches were part of the school curriculum and my parents were super into it. And with every win that I got from these competitions that were part of the whole thing, I got a new model car. My mom and papa pretty much started my collection for me. I was one win away from competing against all of Canada with my World War I slash World Peace speech. The year before that, my speech was about racism. I chose my topics, by the way, not my parents. These were the things that I was concerned about when I was a kid, okay? And that's how my first collection, the car collection, began. My most prized possession in this entire collection has to be this guy right here. The 2001 Nissan Skyline GTR R34 from Too Fast Too Furious. This car in particular, not specifically this one, although this one, I wouldn't mind either, is my dream car, like holy grail dream car. Between Too Fast, Too Furious and Need for Speed Underground, my love for this car absolutely skyrocketed. Apart from the skyline, the rest of Brian O'Connor's cars mean the most to me. And that's because Paul Walker and Brian O'Connor, they meant the world to me as a kid. It was hard for me to learn about his tragic passing years ago. I could never part with these four right here. Though, to be fair, it would take a lot for me to part with any of my Fast and Furious cars. I actually didn't have this one until last year. I realized it was still missing from my collection, so I hit up Kijiji. I found an amazing price and I couldn't say no. This is Brian's Mitsubishi Eclipse. He entered the first legendary drag race in the Fast and the Furious with no money, only his pink slips. And if he won, if he won, he would take the cash and the respect. And they laughed at him, but you know what? He let them know that some people, to some people, Respect is more important. 
Can I replay that first drag race in my head almost word for word? Yes. Yes, I absolutely can. With this piece in the collection now, it kind of feels like it's fully complete. Although, let's be real, I am missing a few key pieces and, uh, you know, the collection could be more complete. By the time Tokyo Drift came out, that was three years later, I was 16 years old and I was heavily into Street Fighter and comic books. But we'll save that for the next chapter of my collector life. If you missed the first chapter, Why I Collect, you can click somewhere over here or the link in the description below to check that out. I hope y'all vibe with that video. Please hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to stick around and kick it with me. And remember, people are weird. So please be kind to each other. YouTubes. I'll see you real soon. Gooby! Listen, I know this might be hard for you to hear, but the truth is, you're not my first love. <laughs> so, is this what? Is this is this what being a YouTuber is like? You just make funny. You like talk to fucking toys. Oh my god! All right, let me let me do two. You're not my first love. I'm like looking them in their eyes and it's just, it's so funny. Like I'm actually like emotional. <laughs>